In my New Year's Eve video, I warned you. I warned you that this would happen. I told you that I'd go back, and well, you know what, let me just play the cut from that. I'm going to finish some videos that I actually started recording and producing, and I never got around to cutting them all together all the way. There are some really boring computer tutorial videos, and I'm very sorry to report this, but I'm probably going to finish them. And now it's happening. This lightly polished turd of a computer repair video is a really bad ASUS job that I had to deal with where I had to cut 17 minutes out of the video and as it stands it's still over ha half an hour long. I, it's just, it drives me nuts even watching it. So all I did was cut out the big chunk in the middle where I had a lot of trouble and the rest of it's unedited. Feel free to skip around and don't forget that I warned you. I apologize in advance for what you're about to go through. Welcome to Asus K53E Repair. We're going to disassemble this computer and I'm going to replace the power jack. I've already gone to the trouble of removing a lot of the screws. So these two screws have already been taken out. This panel slides off. There are screws in several holes all around. I've already removed most of them. Actually, I need to check. I said most, but I actually have already removed all of those. So, we need to get the hard drive out. And while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and remove the battery. Just because we don't want it in there while we're working on this. Hard drive is held in with four screws. Now someone already went into this computer before me. It was dropped and they put some of the screws in the wrong places. I just found another one. Uh, or they replaced them with screws that they should not have used. So we're combating a lot of that with this. Let me give you a little bit of a closer look actually. There you go. That's a little better. So these little skinny screws are the correct ones. There are these really fat ones that I don't think they put in the correct place. In fact, I'm willing to bet those are the ones that are missing right here because those fat screws would have been used for the hinges. Hard drive, grab this tab and pull. the drive away from the SATA connector. Hard drive. Now, there are no screws under here, but there's supposed to be one right here. So they lost that. Screws around the edges. There, there is a corner here. There is a corner here. As I said before, they lost or misplaced or put in the wrong location these screws that went here and here there are two screws under the battery one is here in this indentation and one is over here in this corner near the latch okay that should be all of the screws under the computer. Now, this keyboard needs to come out. Get a pry tool. If you don't have a pry tool, you, you could probably use a flathead screwdriver. Just be careful because you could damage the screen if it jerks. You stick it in these crevices here at the top of the keyboard and pull you kind of pry the keyboard towards you a little bit and it will flex and you can get your finger underneath it and it will make all the rest of them that much easier. So you pop those loose on the top. There are little clips on the sides too and our keyboard is free. Now we have a cable here. Oh look it's coming out so we would have had to go in here anyway. You take this and you pry it this way 
there you go. There's that. I actually think this is a bit bright. Let me let me make this a little dimmer. That's better. That's much better. Screws. Pretty much take any of the screws that you see out. Uh, this computer appears to use all the same screws almost everywhere. So let's go ahead and take all of these screws out. I think they may have made a mistake here too. Oh, yep. Now, I don't know what the deal is with that, but they didn't put that one in correctly either. What's going on there? Six, they are all six, yeah. So these are all the same. That's good to know. Let's see. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. Now we need to get this top plate off. You can't really pull it that way. Oh, guess what? Actually, yes, you can. You can grab it under here where the battery's supposed to be and kind of separate it. So that'll get the back loose. There you go. But I prefer these pry tools for this. Get it in between a seam and just pry the bottom away from the top a little. Oh, see, this guy dropped it really nice. There's a crack. Oh, oh man, he made a mess. Yeah, this computer is not in very good shape. Let's just put it that way. Uh, oh, there it goes. So once you can get something in there, these clips, they kind of grip under like that. So all you have to do is get the top to push away from the bottom enough for them to disengage. And it should work the same all the way around. Come on. Get in there. This computer was dropped quite hard, and I was not the one who was disassembled it first. So, there could be numerous assembly mistakes, or errors, whatever. And it can sometimes be a struggle to not destroy the damned thing. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Yep. take these three screws out these are smaller hidden under the CD drive as they often are one of those screws under the keyboard held that drive in place Let's put that over there with the rest of the parts and we can Alright, here's our first problem. We actually need the touchpad connector to be disconnected, but they have helpfully hidden these things under this tape. So you may need to lift this tape up and see what's under it all. In this case, they've already taken the connector out for me. Just get the tape out of the way. Bam. 
Bam. I like to bend the plastic up a little and then pull it away and it's free. And there you go. Top half gone. Now, now is when things start getting really fun. This thing is disgusting. Wow. Pull the screen forward enough that the computer doesn't want to fall back more tape. This tape gets very annoying. Get the tape out of there. Gently. If you're too rough with it, you could damage something, so be gentle. Get this flat cable. Be careful not to damage it, or those USB ports and sound ports could be damaged. You need this video cable to be removed. Huh, guess what? It's taped too. You almost can't see the tape, but there is tape. Look at this tape. There's tape right there. There's tape. That is really annoying. Super duper annoying. Let me give you a little zoom in. Take the tape up. Pop the cable loose. Oh, that cable is tight. Is it? Pull back. And there, the cable's free. You take your speaker cable out. Wiggle it back and forth so that it comes loose. Note that it comes through this little hole. Now, we need this motherboard out. This CPU fan assembly probably has to come with it. So let's go ahead and take the screw out of the fan assembly here. And let's go ahead and get this video cable detached some more so that tape doesn't hold it in. Take the screw out of the fan assembly. Take where the screws. Here's one. The little arrow indicates which ones you're supposed to take out. Here's one motherboard screw. Does it lift? No, because there's another motherboard screw here. Okay, does it lift? No, there's another one here. Uh, and I see one up there. That should do it. Should. Okay. And we've got one motherboard. Pull the display forward a little more so it stops falling. Uh, we need to get this DC jack removed and replaced because it doesn't work anymore. I'm going to go clean this and I'll be back. Okay. We need this heat sink assembly gone, which means we need to take this processor, this set of clamps on the processor loose. Oh, the screws don't have retainer rings. That's fun. So get these four screws off from around the processor. While we're in here, we will also check the heat sink grease just to see if it's dried up. Because this is an old Windows 7 computer. Okay. Get your cable here. Difficult. It can be quite difficult. There we go. Uh Oh, no, it's still good. There's not much of it though. We'll probably redo the heat sink grease anyway, just because it's yucky. Now, <sighs> I 
how are we going to get this power jack out? First of all, get some cleaning solution. You can use rubbing alcohol if you want on a rag and get the gunk that the user has gotten on the computer through the keyboard perhaps get it off of there dab it whatever but get the crud off because you don't want that to get in your solder joints and it will make no mistake it will get into the solder joints quite nicely try to dry it as best as you can it's usually a good idea after you do this to take an air compressor to it to blast all of the moisture back out oh my god that's so nasty that's absolutely gross oh that's nasty okay never do that again now here comes the fun part We need this jack out, but the problem is it's not very easy to get that out. What we're going to have to do is get the board to stay upright and then remove the jack. So how are we going to do that? Well, there are a few ways, but uh, let's see. I may just give it a clamp, a very gentle clamp, but a clamp nonetheless. I don't have a proper stand here right now, so sue me. If you want to clamp to a board like this, you need to do it where there's no traces running. Center it as best you can. Clamp fairly gently. There we go. And it won't go anywhere. At least not easily. Alright. How are we going to do this so you can see it? Well, I don't know if we can. Anyway, this is dangerous. So most people do it with a soldering iron. I don't know how they do it with a soldering iron because it's almost impossible to reach this junk here. So what I'm going to do is hit it with this heat gun instead. And I may actually just move this so it doesn't get damaged. And do this by itself. By its lonesome. see that? I think you can. Yes, you can. Stay put pretty well. You want to be careful when you do this stuff with these heat guns because it's very easy to end up pulling tiny components or your ethernet socket right off the board. You really just want to focus on that DC jack. And part of the problem is the whole board has to get warm. Okay, sorry about that. I had to actually heat gun it with it laying flat because if I didn't, then this thing was too hard to push in and I also had to heat gun it from the top instead of the bottom. You get the idea. Had to add some solder, had to do a bunch of extra stuff off camera. Uh, I hate Asus power jack jobs. Absolutely hate them because these stupid little clips 
yeah let's just let's just move on um, we need to put this thing back together obviously installation is the reverse of removal and I would like to test it before I put it too far back together but uh, oh yeah thermal paste we're gonna need some thermal paste so I need to get some thermal paste and there it is Good, I have some handy. Wipe the old paste off. Oh, the old paste is actually kind of slippery. Eh, wipe it off anyway. Because it could still be a problem. If you're going to put new paste, you need the old stuff to just be gone. The stuff that goes around the chip, that's probably not a huge deal. You don't really have to worry about removing it too much. It's the stuff that's going to go on top of the chip that needs to be really clean. Ah, oh, yummy. Okay. Take some thermal paste. Oops. Don't drop it like that. That was dumb. Dab it on. Don't need too much. Don't need too little. That's probably more than enough, really. Yeah, I'd say that's definitely, definitely plenty. Alrighty. Spread it out as evenly as you can. Uh, yep. Get a little on there for for fun or profit. And this needs to go back together. We need to start putting it all back together and we'll begin. First, let's put this the way it's going to sit. Rub it around in circles a tiny bit. Just little tiny circles like you're massaging it. And then you pick it up and you see, yeah, it, the coverage is pretty good. Okay check your coverage and if it's good then you can go ahead and start putting it all back together like I said everything is basically just the reverse of removal get one screw in get the diagonal opposite screw in and you can use that one to pull it up once you've got two screws in diagonally opposite this one doesn't appear to have a number guide oh yeah it does I'm doing the wrong ones but as long as you do diagonals first, it will be fine. So, I want to test this DC jack before I put it all back together to make sure that it's actually going to work properly. So, I need to have the heat sink to prevent damage to the processor. Um, heat sink fan hooked up. All right and we need to be able to turn it on so we're going to need the power button and probably should hook up the speakers or the uh, LCD here just yeah get this ribbon out we need this screen hooked up so we can see come on we're going to hook the screen up here, if it lets us, if it lets us. Come on. This particular screen connector is incredibly stubborn. Try not to break anything. The screen's hooked up. Okay. Power button's over here. This is the button board. Let's go ahead and get this loosely seated. And, oh wow, this is really ridiculous. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to get the tweezers for this one. Pain. Alright, button board's in. Power jack's in. Yep, it powers on. Asus. Yep, and there's no hard drive, so it doesn't work. But it powers on. So let's get this back out. And now we have to put it back together for real. Oh, and this is going to be great. You remember that wire that goes right here in this little hole? Yeah, we have to fish it back up. 
somewhere easy to get to with these. I can't see. Oh, there it is. Yep, yep, yep. Come back, come back, come back. There you go. Okay, 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 okay. All right. This is above, this is above. Let's hook this speaker wire back up. Come on, pesky. Okay. This needs to be put back in place. If it will let me, that is. What a nuisance. Come on. There you go. Okay. These, everything seems to have sat down. We need to put screws back uh, everywhere that these little white arrows are. So, one goes here. You'll notice I cleaned the gun, the grunge off the touchpad button area. Let's see, one went here by the fan. You can't see, can you? One went here between the touchpad buttons. Get that display out of the way. One went by the touchpad buttons. One. Where are the white arrows? There's one here, here. Uh, there's one there. I could have sworn there was one over here somewhere. There it is. Are there any more? Any more white arrows on any of the screw holes? I don't think so. So, if that's it on those, we still need to do the touchpad, the keyboard, the button board here. Um, yeah, I don't see it. All right. The last one actually goes over here, holding the fan down. While we're in here, let's go ahead and tighten these hinge screws down a little. They tend to get a little loose over the years. Give them a little nudge so that they're a little tighter if possible so that they don't have to worry about that in the future. Oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, okay. I wonder if that's normal. The buttons are not in good shape. They do engage, so they're okay. Let's uh, get some of these edges clipped back down. Uh, the seams that would not go together before are going together now. Let's go ahead and get the CD drive in because we know one of the screws goes through that. Uh, and that must be the one. There's your optical drive screw. So, actually before we do that, you still need to put these back, these three here, on this side where the optical drive goes. Three here. Mm. Okay. Okay, I I already have this upside down and put the keyboard back, but I've already got it upside down. Let's, uh, that's not the right one. That's someone else's. Let's go ahead and put the hard drive back in place since it doesn't really block any important screws. And the one that did block is gone. So we'll go ahead and put it back in place. And... Screw it down. If it will allow it. Uh, that's actually... They cross-threaded this one pretty bad. Oh, yes, that is that is not good. Uh, 
Wow. It's uh, kind of impressive how badly they cross-threaded that, actually. <sighs> okay. Yeah, my theory about those two screws is definitely correct. These two that have wider shafts, they go in these hinge holes here. And the guy had put them through the wrong holes, and it made his touchpad not work, and it, well, one of them was holding the hard drive. That's that cross-threaded one. So, he didn't leave me in a good spot in that regard. Anyway, so we're just going to put this whole mess back together. Um, I will spare you all those details, but I will at least show you we need to put our power button bar here back in button bar back in if the godforsaken thing will let us that is come on 